Funding for To the Contrary provided by the E. Rhodes and Leona B. Carpenter Foundation, the Colcom Foundation, and the Charles A. Freoff Foundation. Welcome to To The Contrary, a weekly discussion of news and social trends from diverse perspectives. And what a week it has been and what a week it will continue to be. Uh, my guest today, former Democratic Congresswoman Donna Edwards of Maryland, Patrice Lee Anwuka with the Independent Women's Forum, Deborah Carnahan, a former federal prosecutor and state judge from Missouri, and Rena Shabarara, head of Republican Women for Biden. So let's start. Let's look ahead. Um, after the wide, widely called disaster uh, of the presidential debate, largely because President Trump did not act very presidential, uh, we go on to the uh, Kamala Harris. Mike Pence debate. First of all, is it is it going to get much attention in the wake of this major disaster that was the Trump Biden debate? Donna? No, I do think, Bonnie, that it will get attention. I mean, I think that um, the Kamala Harris candidacy is unique and historic. I think people will want to tune in because they don't know her very well, and it will be a good chance for her to introduce herself uh, to the American people. And I don't think it actually will be anything like the mess of the pres first presidential debate uh, because Michael Pence, Mike Pence is not Donald Trump. He'll present a different challenge for Kamala Harris, but it will not be the kind of raucous, interrupting, bullying mess um, that spelled the presidential debate. Well, he's kind of the exact opposite of, of Trump in that way, is he not? First of all, whatever you want to say about his politics and his religious beliefs, um, he he uh, is much more presidential than the president, correct? He acts, he's not rude. He doesn't call people names. He doesn't act like a spoiled high school or grade school child. Um, he's very dignified, right? Well, that's right. And so his de demeanor will be respectful of the office that he holds. And I think Kamala Harris's challenge is going to be to challenge him on the issues and the substance. And it will be a debate in what we've come to know traditionally as um, as debates. And um, I hope that's a lesson learned for the American people. But I don't think the debacle of last night should ever be repeated again. You mean last week? Last <laughs> week. <laughs> OK, Patrice Anwuka. What are your thoughts? You are you. Your organization does not take political positions, but you are a true, solid conservative Republican in the in the mold of Mitch McConnell or the other senators uh, who support the policies of Donald Trump. Well, like thinking ahead to the VP debate, I mean, I, I absolutely agree with uh, Donna Edwards that it's going to be a very different uh, atmosphere, a different tone. I think it's going to be more somber, certainly more policy focused. I do think people are going to be watching to see whether um, Kamala Harris is going to be that prosecutor against uh, the vice president and, and try to, you know, maybe skewer him a little bit. I think he's going to come out unscathed, though, because his presence, his demeanor, the calmness that he brings to the office. And, and what's interesting, though, is he is still a very ardent vocal supporter of his boss, of the president. And he's he will back up President Trump and maybe fill in some of the gaps that people People might have been left with um, following the last week's uh, presidential debate and what the president was trying to articulate and didn't come across. I think you'll see Vice President Biden really fill in those gaps, particularly around the Supreme Court and around what we can be, what, what the nation can be doing and looking forward to with another four years of this administration. Deborah Carnahan. Yes, I'm really looking forward to the debate that's coming up. Um, a couple of things I wanted to point out. But, but let me ask you, do you think this debate, the vice presidential debate, is going to get as much viewership and, and as much attention as this past week's presidential debate? 
You know, it may not get the viewership quite as much because the vice presidential pick normally isn't as, you know, exciting uh, for folks as the presidential picks. But I do think people are going to tune in to Donna's point. They want to know more about Senator um, Harris and they want to see her policies and her viewpoints. Uh, they're not as familiar with her. I think it's also going to be a lot more cordial because you have a former congressman in Vice President Pence and a sitting senator, and they know the rules of decorum and statesmanship. I do think, though, that Senator Harris will be pretty prosecutorial in her technique. That's kind of a technique that's hard to get rid of. And she showed in the Kavanaugh hearings that she was very articulate and she gets right to the point and she will not be sidestepped um, by anything that Vice President Pence says. Right, but when you have, and Rena, I will get to you in a second, but when you have a more of a, a, a quiet, debate, moderated debate, each side has two minutes. Her specialty, if you will recall, uh, and especially as a former prosecutor yourself, was asking a question, waiting a couple of seconds for a quick answer while guys whose brains didn't work as quickly as hers does, and saying, okay, I'll take that as a no, and moving on. You can't, can you really do that? You can't do that in the forum, in the, in the way it's set up. Um, no, that will be more difficult for her um, because she won't be directly asking the questions. Um, but as every good prosecutor knows, um, if she does ask questions, she'll already know the answer to that question. So she might do something like that. But what makes you think, why wouldn't Vice President Pence, having been prepped, as I'm sure he's being, by all kinds of top flight Republican consultants, he'll know the answers to the questions too, won't he? Yeah. I do think you're right. We're not going to see as many surprises. Um, I do agree with Patrice that we are probably going to see a couple swipes here and there from the senator to the vice president. Rena, uh, the President Trump is now widely seen as a liar, as a misstater of facts or non-facts, whatever you want to call it, you know, all kinds of news organizations, and even to a certain extent, Chris Wallace, when he was questioning him and said, that's not accurate, that's not accurate, uh, who works for Fox News, not exactly a left-leaning organization, um, has been nailed as somebody who doesn't have a lot to do with the truth. Is that going to be true of Vice President Pence? Well, certainly, and one of the best known things about Donald Trump is that he has a problem with the truth, right? And in the, one of the earliest moments in the debate of last week between he and Joe Biden, Joe Biden threw out a figure and Trump said, I don't know where you're getting that figure. And so this is what the president does. He, he has a way of handling things this way. And I suspect a lot of that has made its way to the vice president. I see a very different Mike Pence than, than the one I saw when I worked across the hall from him as a, as a Hill staff or a, a young woman who got to know him and his staff pretty well and and thought pretty highly of him and and the same phrases that i use what do, what do you mean give us a little detail about what you mean about that what was he like then versus what he's like now you know, he was very much known as a straight shooter, somebody that, that would speak very directly, had some heart and some compassion in his answers, because I think that's rooted in his religious tradition. So he would find a way to exhibit empathy. Um, I do see a lot of that when he's out on his own in engagements that are covered by the mainstream media. I do see some some semblance of that. And I, I find him to be a decent and dignified man, like I call Joe Biden. Um, but the problem here is that he's worked for somebody who's his complete opposite. Uh, they are night and day. And, and I think that Mike Pence, the Mike Pence that I knew, um, was somebody who had grand ambition. Let's, I mean, and that's not a bad thing, whether it's a male or a female. I think it's fine to have your eyes on higher office. I think his frustration has been that he has not been a, a real key player. Now, obviously, for years, we've seen vice presidents take a back seat. Um, but the reality was, I think he thought he was going to be a bigger player in this administration. And what it's been overshadowed by is the bluster that Donald Trump regularly exhibits. So in this debate, he has a chance to go back to his roots, the policy roots, his very principles. He's a very conservative individual. Again, no problem for that. I'm, I've been a lifelong conservative. There are things that I do agree with him on. There are many things I don't agree with him on. And one of those is that he doesn't seem to fully 
recognize that we have a separation of church and state in this country. And that makes me a bit nervous. I like that he fights for religious liberty on the one hand, but on the other hand, he seems to want to govern with only the Bible. And as a non-Christian person who who actually went to parochial school at some point in my life for many, many years, I, I'm all mixed up about it because it, it feels that that's not governing for everyone, right, on one level. So so I'm going to, I suspect, I'm going to go out and say that I think we're going to see a lot of that on display in his debate with Kamala Harris. But the second thing I really think we ought to look forward to is him to break down uh, how she's a California liberal. That's going to be the challenge for her to push back. Because in the presidential debate, there was some good talk of climate change, Green New Deal. Joe Biden wasn't really able to say my right hand pick, my VP pick is somebody that, oh, wasn't a part of that. She was a part of that. So it's a challenge for the Biden campaign. It's a challenge for Kamala Harris to try to divorce themselves of the California liberal policies that the right is going to really nail them on. Uh, Donna, your thoughts, but also ladies, please feel free to jump in on each other if someone you know, not interrupting, not a la Donald Trump, but when somebody makes a pause, jump in if you have something that you're dying to get out in response to what they just said. What do you think about that? I mean, it, Kamala Harris to me is a very complex human being and she's been accused of being uh, on every side of every issue, depending what was most politically expedient for her. But, you know, show me a politician who hasn't done that. Um, so, uh, but she, but she is seen as too conservative for members of the, of the, uh, African American community on crime, for example, she was a serious hardline prosecutor and yet Rena's saying she's too far left on the environment. Well, you know, I, look, I think that Kamala Harris brings an awful lot to the table. And I think one of the things that you cannot escape is that. Um, her role is is a supportive one. It's supporting the uh, Joe Biden and the ticket and whatever she, her views were during the primary election. She signed on to the the Biden plan and she's embraced that. And I will say that you know one of the challenges Mike Pence is going to have is that the issue that is at front and center of the American people is the handling of the coronavirus. He was in charge. He's been in charge of the task force. I think that you can fully expect that Kamala Harris is going to go at him on his leadership of that task force on the messages that have been put out to the American people and the handling of the coronavirus. And so while Donald Trump may be skating away from his own words, it's going to be really tough for Vice President Pence to move away, to back away from the so-called leadership that he provided of the task force and what that has resulted in the deaths of two, over 205,000 Americans and so over 7 million who uh, contracted coronavirus. He's not going to be able to run away from that. And I think that you can fully expect that Kamala Harris is going to stick on that point. Um, and it will make Vice President Pence very uncomfortable. I well, agree with that. If there's Please. anything I think um, that Joe, that uh, Vice President Pence is going to be sticking on, and rightly so, is going to be picking up where President Trump left off at the end of the debate, talking about the protests, civil unrest, how uh, peaceful protests have been hijacked by um, some pretty violent actors. Uh, and I think it's going to be a hard charge for Kamala Harris to be able to respond to and the Biden campaign to respond to, because just like Joe Biden wasn't able to have a very good answer um, to to respond to that kind of violence, I don't think she's going to be able to as well. Um, now, when it comes to the coronavirus uh, and, and the administration's response, I actually think it's going to present a great opportunity for Vice President to talk, Pence to talk about the coronavirus response, what the administration did, maybe what it could have done differently, um, but also recognizing that a lot of what was done um, was done by other by, by leaders of other nations. And a lot of what uh, Joe Biden even laid out as, as his plan were very the very things that the administration has done. And then it's also going to present an opportunity to talk about the vaccines and to hold, I think, both Kamala Harris and Joe Biden responsible for their, um, their I would call it, uh, unreasonable comments saying that I can trust science 
and scientists, but I can't trust vaccines and what impact that is going to have on the public when we are so close potentially to having a vaccine that we would want everyone to be able to, to get, I mean, if they feel comfortable doing so. Well, Kamala Harris is not going to allow her uh, position on vaccines or on uh, criminal justice and criminal justice reform or on uh, potential violence in the streets um, to be um, uh, hijacked by people putting words into her mouth. I think that she will, as a good prosecutor, she will both be able to defend herself and prosecute the case against this administration. All right, now let's let's spend a little time looking back on the uh, presidential debate and most specifically how women reacted to it. There was a very interesting article, which I shared with you all, that talked about the fact that women are 20 or 40 times more likely to be cut off by men in conversations in their offices and particularly meetings and board meetings and that sort of thing. Uh, and so they took Trump's cutting off sometimes 10 times inside of two minutes, Joe Biden, uh, during the debate as sickening and a complete turnoff. So do we think that any undecided women or even women who were going to vote for President Trump were turned off by his raucous, impolite, unpresidential behavior. Patrice, let me let me start with you. Sure. Um, Trump supporting women, no, they will not be turned off by it. I mean, they may not like it, they'll find it distasteful, but they're not going to uh, bring their vote down to just how he performed in his rhetoric in one night. I think they're thinking about the issues the Supreme Court nomination being a huge factor in that and health care around tri price transparency and what the administration is trying to do there. Uh, independent women, women in the middle, I think, and women, white women in, in the suburbs, probably uh, he did not do himself a favor on, 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 uh, on the debate night. And I will just say that I was disappointed in the president for interrupting so many times. And I was disappointed in Joe Biden for falling for the president's traps and trying to bring him in. But he did. And you saw just as much after a while, just as much back and forth between the two of them. So, you know, women are going to be turned well, off, but is it I going do. to change their vote? No. Uh, yeah, but it was clear to me when I watched the debate that the whole the chaos was started, launched, uh, tossed out there by the president, not by Biden. Biden let uh, President Trump steal a lot of his time. If I were in there, I would have said, wait a minute, I want my full two minutes. You know, this guy has just jumped in for 30 seconds. Give me a full two minutes. And my point is blah, 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 blah. But how, when you have a bully, when you have somebody who quite frankly, to a lot of people look like he's really lost it emotionally and mentally, um, how are you supposed to respond? Are you supposed to sit back, not say anything and let him steal all your time? Or are you supposed to respond? And in which case you have no choice but to respond in kind. If you talk in a normal tone of voice, you're not going to be heard. So what, what would you, if you were advising Biden to deal with Trump, Patrice, how would you tell him to do it? <laughs> um, I actually think Biden had some good moments where he did get under President Trump's collar. Um, you know, I think that he, he started to, uh, you know, say, well, wait a minute, hold on, let me correct the record. Uh, he did ask for his time back on a couple of occasions from the moderator, um, which is good. And I think that's important. Sometimes the, the way to diffuse a situation is actually just to be quiet and let someone talk until they until they stop talking. Then you jump in because they get tired after a certain point. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I would be I'm hopeful that both campaigns have gone back, watched the record and watched conservatives who are Trump supporters say, hey, Mr. President, we didn't need that last night. What we need you to be is on your game and, and really doing the debate prep. And I think that's what you're okay. going to see. Let's because uh, I want to get everybody in on this, starting with you, Rena, and then Deborah, and then Donna. What how could have by how could Biden or anybody in the position that Biden was in have handled him or herself, which of course Hillary Clinton unfortunately didn't do much to her 
uh, chagrin and loss um, in a situation where you're being commandeered by a bully. What this was was not a debate. It was not a discussion. It was it was nothing but a display of egos. And I'll say largely from the president, because, look, the reality is, is that he doesn't like Joe Biden personally. And that already is kind of like a violation of the grand tradition of an incumbent and a challenger being sort of kind to one another on the political stage. This was truly at its core just really a nuisance. I'll say more than anything else. I was annoyed watching that last night. I was annoyed that Joe Biden had to put up with somebody who wasn't just interrupting. He was violating the rules. Chris Wallace had to tell him, you are violating the rules your campaign agreed to. This is, he acted in a manner in which, you know, we treat our, we teach our preschoolers, my preschool age children act differently than this because we tell them to respect rules and norms. So let me be very clear when I say that a woman moderator would have been dealt with very differently in the public uh, than, if, than a male moderator. Chris Wallace, I'm not saying he should be fired from his job, but he should not be allowed to moderate anything again. He failed at his job. And, and truly, when I want to answer your earlier question, Bonnie, about what can somebody do? Guess what a woman could have would have done? Uh, and, and if I was the woman in that chair instead of Chris Wallace last night, I would have cut the mics, I would have called security, and I would have said, we need to retreat. We need to go have a moment. How about a gap? To the rules. And what's interesting is that um, the president's people have been out there talking about how unfairly he was treated by Chris Wallace. And I thought that Chris Wallace did a, a fairly decent job in trying to rein him in and, and cut him off and say, no, you agreed to these rules. Stick with them. But as far as Donald Trump's behavior, we know his behavior. Remember, we were told in the last... Uh, election. Oh, he'll he'll eventually act presidential. He never did. This is Donald Trump. This is what to expect. I did like the format of the past debate better than when we had it here in St. Louis at Washington University. And the president got up and walked around Hillary and stalked her. And as she later said, the hairs on the back of her neck were standing up from his predator behavior that he was exhibiting towards her. So I think a real big thing with Donald Trump is keep him at the podium, get a big old horn, and just blow that horn till he shuts up. Yeah, yeah. so a, a couple of things. One, I think that um, largely Joe Biden's interruptions, and there were a few of them, we're really just trying to get in the game and speak to the American people directly to camera in response to the president of the United States, who was just nonstop interrupting. If you have a Donald Trump who comes in, has agreed on rules, and then violates those rules, no amount of rule setting, even as the Presidential Debate Commission has announced that they are planning going forward, to restructure uh, the rules. But even if you got a candidate to agree to those rules, Donald Trump doesn't follow rules. And so I'm just not really convinced, one, I'm not convinced of the necessity of going forward with more debates. I'm not really sure what it, what it is that we are gonna learn. I think we'd learn a lot more. For example, if Joe Biden agreed to a, a set of interviews with all the major um, news outlets. I think we'd learn a lot more uh, than uh, and about the president. And See, so that's where I disagree, Donna. I must say, sorry to interrupt. I must say, though, I, I've had conversations with women that still support the president, and they do not remember Joe Biden's words after all the protests, the BLM stuff that turned, you know, into arson and violence. Last night, he very clearly said. I do not condone violence. Violence is wrong. It's the wrong answer to all this. And he also said, I will not defund the police. So I think these- Which he has said multiple which he times said before. over and over. And I just, I just think though, Rena, here's, here's the problem, is that um, it, the slice of, of women in particular that we're talking about who could be moved, I think like I was, are like totally turned off by that, we remember every ex-husband, every ex-boyfriend, every ex-boss, uh, every former colleague who treated us like that. And so I don't think it served, it certainly didn't serve the president well, 
but it also did not give Joe Biden the opportunity in an unfiltered way uh, to be able to get across his message so that people would remember. And so I'm not really sure that a format uh, of a debate with somebody who is intent on violating the rules for the purpose of disruption, uh, for the purpose of sowing chaos, is going to make a difference. Watching this, I thought I had all these almost PTSD feelings about what has happened as a woman to me over the years um, and being cut off and marginalized. And it just gave me a really yucky, yucky feeling in my stomach. And I think it's going to with women suburban voters. And that's what they're looking at. They want those women suburban voters. All right, thank you all. Thanks the four of you for a great discussion. And uh, to you, to our viewers, please go to our website, which is pbs.org slash to the contrary and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And whether you agree or think to the contrary, please join us next time. Funding for To the Contrary provided by the E. Rhodes and Leona B. Carpenter Foundation, the Colcom Foundation, and the Charles A. Freoff Foundation. For a transcript or to see an online version of this episode of To the Contrary, please visit our PBS website at pbs.org forward slash to the contrary. Be more. PBS. <laughs>